I can't really take it in, you know. It's not something that I wake up and go, ooh, I'm the most successful, you know, British solo female artist every morning. But it, I can't believe it, really. It's, um, it makes me smile. It really does feel proud. And, um, yeah, it's great. Schizophonic became one of the most beloved solo Spice Girl albums since its release in 1999 and saw Jerry Halliwell acquire three UK number one singles. By the year 2001, Jerry was causing further media interest after appearing at the Brit Awards to present friend Robbie Williams with the Best British Male Award. Her new slim figure and shorter hairstyle made headlines and acted as the first promotional platform for Jerry's second album phase. Scream if you want to go faster. Jerry began working on her second album in May of 2000, collaborating once again with production team Absolute, who produced her previous album, as well as new producers and writers, including Greg Alexander, Rick Knowles and Stephen Lipson. Jerry would describe working with Rick Knowles as a daunting and draining experience, with her often having to sit on a stool in his studio, with Knowles telling her to just sing. He would use the words and melodies she came up with to help her build a song. Still very uncertain of her talents, Jerry found Rick's writing style stretched her to her limits. And you better get down, you don't have to get undressed just because it feels like sex. There you yes, go! Listen. You're good! Jerry felt the material being recorded for Scream If You Wanna Go Faster was different from her previous album because she'd gone in a much more creative direction. She felt the album was much better than her first. The album writing and recording sessions would continue on until February 2001. Hello, it's me. It's Jerry. I'm in Miami, um, I'm shooting my album cover. The shoot for the album cover was taken in Miami and Jerry found it long and stressful. She was dealing with body and image insecurities and still felt inadequate in front of the camera. I think about you as these nights grow I am not trained in anything, you know, in dance or singing. That proves to you in life that anything is possible. You put your mind to it, you can. At least have a go. It's amazing. Like, I had this like idea in my head, and then suddenly here it is. I just can't believe it, and it's working. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I've never done ballet. I had one lesson when I was 12, and they put me in a, a class for the three-year-olds, and so I left. She worked really hard for this. She's gonna do ballet. And She's gonna do some Thai bows, she's gonna do jazz dancing, and everything is very much 80s. So she's been preparing for this. I think I'm dreaming, yeah? Oh, it's about dreaming? Dreaming. Oh, the apple between the legs. Yes. 
Uh, if you were the star of the show, starring the big lady man. Yeah. We were great, <laughs> weren't we, darling? <laughs> we all sort of dream of doing different things, I think. They were fantasies, and it's brilliant when you get to act them out. It really is. Be a prima ballerina for half an hour. I don't think I'd want to be one full time. It's too much for hard work. Hi, it's day two of our video shoot. That's good we change this now, yeah. yeah. First shot of the morning is me running down the, the corridor like Coco did in Fame and realising she's late for class, which is kind of um, a very familiar thing to me. So now we're doing like a school little project, kind of um, schooled out. Today's going to be pretty tough because it's cold. It's very, very cold. And we're going to be getting wet later. This is as good as it gets, basically. <laughs> And I'm so happy to be wearing more clothes. I'm so happy that I don't have to put those knickers on again. So I am so over them. Yeah, it's fun with that, isn't it? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hey, I'm back. Hurrah! We've got one more shot left till the horrible one I'm so dreading. I think I might get pneumonia. But if you want fame, fame cuts. And right here's where you start paying with pneumonia. <laughs> Very happy. It looks, it looks really cool. It's really, really, really cool. Why did you decide to release a cover of The Weather Girls' It's Raining Men as your new single? Well, I actually didn't decide. It was really odd because I was all ready to go with my new album, my single, I had the video idea, you know, all ready. And then um, the producers of the movie said to me, um, do you want to record uh, It's Raining Men for the soundtrack? Mm. And so I said, yeah, it'll be fun. And I love Bridget Jones because I've read both of the books. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did it, just quickly, and then they all loved it and said we want it to be a single, and I just thought, mm, this is a bit of a gift. Yeah. You know, it'd be fun to do, so I just thought, yeah. go with it. Now, the video for It's Raining Men is a real mix between the kids from Fame and Flashdance. Were you a real fan of both those shows in the 80s? Kind of. Fame more than anything, because yeah. in the TV series, you know, I really like Leroy and... <laughs> did, you, yeah. did you watch on a Thursday night after yeah, I did. the pops? Yeah, I did. And the other thing, I always remember me kind of when the music came on, me and my sister would kind of do a half blitz <laughs> like that. Like, <laughs> like that. You have to leave that in. On the 30th of April 2001, It's Raining Men would become the first single to be lifted from the upcoming project. The album track, Feels Like Sex, was originally slated as the lead single before plans were scrapped in favour of Jerry's cover of the Weather Girls classic. The single became Jerry's fourth number one hit on the UK singles chart for two consecutive weeks, selling 150,000 copies in its first week alone. Jerry became the first solo British female artist to have four number one singles in the UK, a record she held until 2014. It's Raining Men became her most successful solo single to date. The track would also hit the top spot in Belgium, France, Ireland, Italy, Poland and Scotland. I've always felt very unconfident about my, my dancing. You know, I've been a club dancer freestyle, but for somebody to teach me to do jazz, 
and to learn how to do the split felt really good. I felt very flattered that they thought I had a body double. I did have a stunt double and one roly poly bit. So I thought I'd break my neck and that would take me five years to, but the rest is me. So I was like very excited that they thought it was somebody else. I, I do have a, a, a leaner stomach than I used to. And also I kind of celebrated the fact that I have a very deep voice before I try to shy away from it. So it's a little bit, it was like, you know, as a writer, I want, it's great to have more flexibility in the melody. So it allowed me, it's like when you've got a song in your heart but you didn't quite know how to play the violin, it was so frustrating. So now, that, that was a joy for me to be able to do that. Scream If You Wanna Go Faster was released on the 14th of May 2001 to rather negative reviews from music journalists, with some labelling the album as an unmitigated disaster, suggesting that the mix of sounds such as rock, reggae, disco and rap were unconvincing and instantly forgettable. Some reviewed the album more positively though, noting that the record was diverse, uplifting and fun through and through. The album's artwork would spark outrage from road safety campaigners who claimed it to be very irresponsible behaviour. A spokesman for Jerry found it amazing that the cover was taken so seriously, seeing it as merely a bright and fun image. The back cover featured Jerry screaming out the album's song titles through a megaphone. By each song lyric inside the album booklet, it specified whether the song is for the heart, sexy, to make you move, or for the mind. I guess you're a bad boy. Despite the mixed reviews, the album would peak at number 5 in the UK, selling around 22,000 copies in its first week. The album was eventually certified gold. Across Europe, Scream If You Want To Go Faster attained moderate success, particularly in Greece and Italy, reaching numbers 5 and 8, respectively. Jerry was disappointed with the generally low sales and critical reviews, especially considering how proud of the record she was, and noted that she'd really wanted the progress that she'd made to have been more widely recognised. To promote the album, Jerry embarked on an extensive tour across the UK and Europe. She performed several tracks from the album on television shows such as Top of the Pops and festivals like Festival Bar and Party in the Park. We find ourselves crying because we can't make it last. We hope for the future. Jerry performed in July 2001 at an annual fashion event in Rome in promotion of the album. Halfway through the performance, she jumped into the city fountain at the Spanish Steps. However, the singer angered locals and was fined by Italian police, who said the singer would have to pay £320. The making of my video, Scream If You Want To Go Faster. We've got two characters. One is kind of Lara Croft girl. And um, she's kind of the coolest one, I think. And you see her chasing to get to a place which is going to be where the performing girl is. And she's kind of a bit of a, you know, loves herself a bit too much. And then you'll see later on what she does when, when uh, traveling Jerry gets to performing Jerry. Robbie Williams encouraged me actually to release this track because he really loved it I, when i first wrote it i played it to him and um he was like this is rocking i was like mm. Get ready to fly. the jerry she's very much has her own kind of concepts of what she wants to do and some of those things are attainable things and some are you know completely ridiculous you know within a three and a half minute music video with carol carol 
know, when I wrote the Scream If You Want to Go Faster, basically, I had the title of the album before I wrote the song. And, um, and before I got a speeding ticket as well. And an art imitating life, or life the other way around, I don't know which. And, and I was listening to like Led Zeppelin, and I went, and, I, and then I got the, the chorus of And I walked into the studio with Rick Knowles, and he's American. I had to go in there and go, okay, I want it to go a bit like this, like a metal feeling guitar. This one's a great video shoot to be doing, you know, what environment, you know, it's hot, you know, it's nice sunny people. You know, I can't bear working with people that have just got like a negative vibe. He is gorgeous. He thinks I'm going to have a toy boy. I haven't had one a toy boy for a long time. This is so brilliant. I love getting up on stage. Two best things in my life, you know, uh, career-wise. One second is um, having a creative outlet in the studio, having an ability to express how I feel when I've got that emotion to my chest I did it two weeks ago, got in the studio and wrote a song called Broken Glass you know, and it just came out in such a creative very therapeutic way and then the other way you know, instead of, when I go to a party I don't need to show off and you know, say hey everyone look at me, I can let all that ego out on stage and it's allowed, it's, it's a legal ego I think, you know um, ego, you know, everyone needs a little bit of ego but um, alter ego is like the slim shady. It's like your, um, it's like I don't know the fantasy of someone you you know you'd like people to see you at all tough and sexy. And um, you know it's what people use on stage. I use on stage completely. It's like the mask that we hide behind. When I first started going solo, I picked four characters to be. You know, I picked a, a there was a vamp, there was a um, uh, there was the virgin, there was the the bitch, like the workaholic, and I can't remember the other one. And um, and now okay, there's two, and hopefully they'll be integrated. You know, having a healthy balance. On the 30th of July 2001, the album's title track was released as the second single. Jerry described Scream If You Wanna Go Faster as by far the most rock and roll song she'd ever recorded, relating its adrenaline-packed feel to her newfound enthusiasm for listening to Led Zeppelin, as encouraged by her close friend, Robbie Williams. Written by Jerry and Rick Knowles on the day of her first recovery meeting from bulimia, she described the song as the things I did to avoid staying still and dealing with my feelings. The accompanying music video saw Jerry portraying two characters in the video, describing it as Lara Croft meets Blondie. The video generated some controversy as the two women theme was very similar to former bandmate Victoria Beckham's single, Not Such an Innocent Girl. Now it's a clash of the titans, isn't it? I mean, 
The recent feud between Posh and Jerry over their new video. Apparently, Jerry's copied Posh's video. Posh filmed hers first and apparently went ballistic. You know, she had this idea of, of being good girl, then bad girl, and Jerry did exactly the same thing. And I think there's a real rivalry between the two. The song entered the UK singles chart at number 8, which became the lowest charting single of Jerry's career at that time. How does your relationship with George Michael work? He's really good when it comes to men. I, I'd say, watch how should I play it? And also musically, I'd say, he, he, like for example, he loves calling on my album. Now, for him to like a record on my album, he's so critical, perfectionist. I know it must be pretty good for him to go, that is really good. The third and final single release from the album was the beautiful ballad, Calling, released on the 26th of November, 2001. It was written by Jerry and Peter John Vitesi and produced by Stephen Lipson. With Calling, Jerry felt confident she had a hit single on her hands. Is going down on me. The black and white music video for Calling was filmed in Barcelona in October 2001. Calling peaked at number 7 on the UK singles chart. In her autobiography, Just For The Record, Jerry revealed that the chart position upset her as Calling was her favourite song from the album and she was certain that it was a surefire number 1. Due to her disappointment, no further singles were released from the album and Jerry would relocate to Los Angeles for several months to take a break from the music industry. project would also produce some of Jerry's most favoured B-sides by fans, including Brave New World, New Religion, Breaking Glass
You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go through a lot since my baby girl's not here. Life ain't been the same for me. You could be my inspiration to help me and getting better. All of which were felt to be just as strong, if not stronger, than many of the album tracks. At the time of release, the album was seen as a disappointing successor to Schizophonic. In retrospect, the record was vastly underrated and deserved much greater success. It showcases some of Jerry's best vocals across her entire discography and is incredibly witty and tongue-in-cheek in its lyricism and playful production. Overall, it's aged much better than some of the production on her debut and remains a joyful listen from start to finish. Jerry would return to music three years later with Ride It and her Passion album in 2005. However, it would fail to reach the same heights of either Schizophonic or Scream If You Want to Go Faster, and Jerry would pause on releasing any further solo albums. Oh, oh, oh.